So tonight we are continuing with Rabbi Nachman's wisdom and the topic of Amuna. Okay, and Amuna it was actually one of the topics that Rabbi Nachman talked about the whole like his whole life. It was it was his it was his thing, and he would say that Amuna is the most important thing in every aspect of Judaism, and he would say that this is this is like his like what his special thing. Like other people like their 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 thing is their thing is one mitzvah, there are other people, their thing is different mitzvah. And his thing was Amuna, and he felt really felt that the most important reason why he was put into this world is to help us develop our Amuna. And Amuna is very, we said it's a time appropriate thing because Pesach is the holiday of Amuna that Hashem took us out of Egypt in order that we should have a real relationship with him, in order that should, we should have a clarity about his existence. And, and it's also a very critical thing to have it's a critical um, ability to, for us to access because um, we're talking about Nisan being the month of Geula, being the month of redemption. So the Gemara says that it's in the merit of Amuna that we're going to be redeemed. Okay? So this is, it says that also that it's because of the Amuna of the Jewish people in Egypt. That's how they merited to be redeemed. And just like they merited to be redeemed, in the merit of Amunah, so too we are only able to be redeemed in the merit of Amunah. So this is the, like, it's a very important thing. This is the, the first of all, Ibn Ahmed is saying is the most important thing of Judaism, and second of all, on a national level, so this is the thing that's actually going to bring us Geula. Okay, so, so I think for today's class, I want to try to define what, what is Amunah? Like, it's a, like, it's, it's very, it's, it's a term that it's been thrown around since, since, like, we heard Hebrew words for the first time, and um, it's people like to say, I'm, I'm working on my Amunah, I'm, I'm struggling with my Amunah, I, I have questions in Amunah, and like, uh, I want to just define what, what, is, this, what is this thing called, called Amunah. So, so the, the common definition for Amunah is faith. It's faith, okay? Uh, meaning that I believe. I believe something, okay? So, people have a misconception that the emuna, like there's, the, I, th I think this is a Christian thing, that, that emuna begins where your brain stops. Emuna begins when your brain stops, meaning that, that, I, that there's something called knowing, there's something called knowing, and that's things that I can access with my brain, that's called that I know. And then the things that I can't access with my brain, so I don't know, but even though I don't know, I believe. Okay? So, so in, in, this, in this model, so Amuna doesn't apply to the things that, that are logical. Okay? Um, now, some people, I've heard this, um, not, not in any books, but just like, I've heard people attribute this to Rabbi Nachman. Okay? Um, it's actually a misquote of Rabbi Nachman. Rabbi Nachman doesn't say that Amuna, that, that Amuna starts where your brain ends. What he says is that, that the main Amuna is in the things that your brain can't comprehend. Okay? What he mean, when he says that the main elements of Amuna are in the things that your brain can't comprehend, so he doesn't mean that, that you can't have Amuna in things that your brain can comprehend, but he means that the important parts of Amuna are specifically in the things that your brain can't comprehend. Okay, that's a, that's what he's saying. We'll get we'll get to this soon, but, but let's try to define what what does emuna mean. Okay, so the Rambam, so he's the one that really codifies the emuna of the Jewish people, and he writes a series of thirteen ikare emuna. Okay, he writes the ikarim of Judaism, and these are the fundamentals of Judaism. Okay, and all of these thirteen things are elements of our belief system, okay? So, so we, spoke about, we spoke about last week how Judaism absolutely thinks that what you believe is, that, that your belief system is very important. Like the, we, we made fun of these, uh, of these people that, that said that Judaism is, about, Judaism is about what you do, and Christianity is about what you believe, and that Judaism is about what you do also, but it absolutely makes a difference to what you believe. And we said that even more so, the person that's messed up in their belief system so it says that they don't have a share in the world to come. Whereas a person that has a proper belief system, even if they do everything against the books, even though they, they go against every sin, in the, sin in, the, in the Torah, but if their belief system is good, then they have a share in the world to come. And 
they're, they're good to go. Meaning that you are your belief system as opposed to what you do. You're not, that what you do doesn't define you. How you perceive reality defines you, okay? So, so, and so this is really that, that we, we spoke about that, how in manifestation, this is true, that, that in, I believe this was here, that, that, that the way that manifestation works is not that if I think something, then I will attract it and it will happen, but rather that if I believe something, okay, if my, in my core beliefs, my core beliefs create a reality and they are the way through which I perceive my life. They're, and they're, that's the way that the world relates to me as well. Like that is my reality. My reality is my belief system and therefore a person that's missing something critical in their belief system, so then they just don't have what it takes to, to continue. Like the, the, the basic fundamental building block of my soul in the world to come, my essence, my existence is my belief system. Okay, so, so that's, why, that's why the Rambam codifies these 13 Ikarim. And the word Ikar is a fundamental. In other words, that what's an Ikar? That we, we have this in, in the Halachot of, of, of Brachas, that, that there's something called Ikar and Tafel. Okay? That if you, have, if you have pasta and sauce, so you only make a bracha on the pasta, you don't make a bracha on the sauce. The pasta is called the Ikar, and the sauce is called the tafel. If you have, if you have cereal and milk, so you only make a bracha on the cereal, you don't make a bracha on the milk. So you have the, the ikar is the, the fundamental thing, and you have the other thing which is subordinate to it. Okay, so in so the the ikar is the main the main thing, and the the when we talk about ikar, so it's it's really when, when the Rambam is saying that there's thirteen ikarim of Judaism. So what he's really saying is that there's thirteen things that everything else depends on them. Okay, meaning that Amuna is not just like the most important mitzvahs, but rather it's fundamental in the sense that without them, nothing else makes sense. Okay, so that's why the Rambam says, that's why the Rambam writes that it's, it's more worthwhile for him to share ideas of Amuna, to teach a person, to teach a person one, one small idea of Amuna is more exciting for him, it's more meaningful for him than to teach him the entire tractates of halachot. Okay, if I could, I could tell you, I could teach you exactly, exactly how to keep Shabbat, like that for, for a thousand hours, I'll teach you how to keep Shabbat, that, that if you would have a choice of either teaching somebody a thousand hours to keep Shabbat, or teach, speak to a person for five minutes and explain to him that there's a God in heaven, so he would feel it more, it's more meaningful for him to spend the five minutes to teach a person that there's a God in heaven than to teach the person a thousand hours of how to keep Shabbat. Okay? That it's, the, it's the most important thing that he could possibly do is to help a person with their belief system, with their amuna. Okay? So that's why, because the reason is because it's a fundamental thing. That it's, it's, not just, it's, not, it's not a question of more important, less important. It's fundamental in the sense that everything else depends on it. Okay? So, so what does this mean? What does this mean that it's, that it, that it's, a, that it's, a, it's a fundamental thing? So, the, the, the word, the word amuna, the word amuna, so it's connected to the word na'aman, okay? Na'aman means trustworthy, okay? So, a person who is na'aman is a person that I, I, I don't have to always be anxious that maybe he's going to turn his back on me, that maybe he's going to betray me, that maybe he's not going to be available, maybe he's not going to, that, that, that a person who's loyal, that means that he's always going to be there. Okay, it's something that I can depend on, something which is really, really solid. Okay, so the, 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 the opposite of a person who's, who's ne'aman is a person who's flippy-flappy, a person who's like sometimes there, sometimes not. So, um, the, so when we're talking about am amuna, okay, so the amuna is, is the, the reason why something is the reason why something is loyal is because there's something that holds them down. Okay, so that's why emunah is the thing that holds me down. Meaning, the thing that makes me ne'eman is my emunah. Okay, so the the emunah is the part of me that that this is that makes this so real to me that it's I'm going to be loyal to you. So then there's a piece of me that is is so committed to you, so that commitment, that is the amuna, 
And because of my commitment, because it's so clear to me, therefore I am loyal. Okay? So, so the definition of the definition of Amuna is my connection to the thing that I'm loyal to. Okay, so when we're trying to define what does it mean amuna. So amuna is not um, certainly not belief. It's a person can have can be loyal to something that loyal or disloyal to something or committed or not committed to something that your brain understands. Right? A person a person could 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 know could understand in their brain that something is not healthy for them, but but they they just it doesn't it doesn't make a difference to them. It's like they're like I think I've told you before, the Rabbi Tatz, so has this crazy story when he was um, when he was I think an intern in, in like in South Africa um, for, for, for um, in medical school. So there was this guy that there was this guy that he had some kind of blood disease that smoking was was like way more dangerous for him than for most people, and and the doctor told him that like you have to stop right now if you it's it's killing you it's going to take you off piece by piece they're going to have to like amputate your legs you're going to it's going to be it's going to be really stop and he didn't stop and a couple of months later so he saw him in the hospital with an amputated leg and and the doctor told him you know you have to you have to stop this is not okay you know you 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 have to, you're, you're not you're, you're not respecting your body you know it's, it's not going to work you're not going to out outsmart the system and he didn't listen and Another six months later, he was losing, he lost his other, his other foot. And the doctors told him, this is not okay, you have to stop. And six months later, he lost his right arm. The last time he saw him, so Rabbi Tad says that, he, that he, he said, I saw him with, without any legs, without one arm, and in his left arm, he was holding a cigarette. Okay? So that, that's, that's a person that, that he knows, that he, he knows with his brain, he knows with his brain that something is that something is wrong, but but the reality doesn't face him. It doesn't it doesn't happen. So a person can the the when we're talking about amuna. It's not necessarily about things that don't make sense. It's that you can have amuna or lack of amuna even to things that that do make sense. You know, um, people that there's people that are that are more cautious. There are people who are less cautious in life, and so the like sometimes sometimes people they mistake. Some sometimes people can be can be can like adventures, and they can like taking risks, and they can like uh, they, they 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 like when there's uh, when when there's uh, like um, things are challenges, and sometimes it's coming from a sometimes it's, it's coming from a real uh, heroic feeling of of yeah, a strength of character of uh, fearlessness. Yeah, we're talking about this uh, Sunday night with uh, Nissan, but um, this is one of the this is one of the areas. Tra traits, which is why it's a it's a Mashiach, it's a Gula trait, and so sometimes people can have can have this fearlessness, and sometimes they 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 give a give a they give across a feeling of fearlessness, but really it's not that they're fearless; it's really that they're fools. It's really that they just the the reason why they're quote unquote fearless is really because they. Don't understand the reality that they're that they're in. They don't they don't understand that it's actually very dangerous, and that's why the um, some people like uh, uh, the Briskarov would talk about this. He was he was saying he was saying this during World War Two, that that some people have real emuna, that the Hashem is going to protect me, and some people so they're just stupid that they they're they're just like happy go lucky and that yeah everything's good, and those Nazis. You can't kill me. I'll take them down. Like that, that like that, you're, that's just you, 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 that's just called being a fool. That's not called being fearless. That's not called a muna. Can I ask you something to that what you just said um, about like someone having a muna that Hashem is going to protect you? Can you like can you trust? Like how can you trust that? Like if Hashem, like there are situations where Hashem doesn't protect you, so why would you believe? Okay, let, 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 let's put that question on hold because okay. right now I, I want to discern, discern between the definition of emunah and the things that we have emunah to. Okay. The things that we ha that we ma'amin, the okay. things that we're ma'amin. And first, um, first I want to just define what what is emunah. Right. So can I clarify also? Like you said, emunah is loyalty to your beliefs. Is loyalty emunah is the connection that we have to a certain truth. Okay. The connection that we have to a certain truth, that is the definition 
of a muna. And, um, and that's why you can have a, a certain, like this, in this guy with this disease, so he had a certain truth that smoking is going to kill me, and he, didn't, he wasn't connected to that truth. Okay? Um, I, think the, I think I told you before that, that this is a story that a friend of mine told me, that, that, that you know, sometimes, like even things that we know, things that, things that we know, like intellectually, that we, we don't always sometimes like make mistakes. We like, we, we mess up, we mess up, like because we, because we weren't, we weren't careful enough. Sometimes we'll, we'll accidentally lie, sometimes we'll accidentally, um, accidentally like the, the touch mukta and Shabbos, and like sometimes we'll, and so he asked that, it never, we never happens to like, by accident, we we're, we're just happen to be, happen to be playing with a knife and we accidentally stick it into an electric socket. It doesn't happen, right? It doesn't happen that we, that we, uh, I mean, this maybe might happen, but hopefully it, uh, that a person doesn't just accidentally just roam off mindlessly into a busy street, right? It doesn't, like those, like those things where, the, the, those mistakes don't happen when it comes to those things, right? Okay, so, so what's the difference? So what's the difference? So the difference is very simple, that, that when we were kids, so this is, just for, this is what he was saying. So when when we were kids, so one day, one day we lied, and our mother said, "Hey, that's not nice. We don't lie," and or we touched mukta on Shabbos, and our mother said, "Hey, it's Shabbos, no mukta," and and so we said, "Oh, okay." So we put we stopped lying. We put down the mukta, and and then one day, we accidentally were playing with a with a knife, and we started getting to close to an electric socket, and my mother said, ah! <laughs> and so, and so that, 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 that's like, then we knew, then we knew that electric sockets and knives don't go together, that's something. So it, it registers in a, in a different place in our brain. In our, we have these two truths, these two truths that in terms of intellectually, which are, which are you more sure about? Are you more sure that it's not good for you to, put a, a, a knife into an electric socket, or you're more sure that you shouldn't lie, you shouldn't touch moksa. So I'm equally sure. I'm equally sure, right? In terms of how much of a truth it is, so they're equally true. So my, the difference between the two is my connection to the truth. Okay, so when we're talking about what is my amuna, my amuna is what is my connection to these truths, okay? So, so Rabbi Nachman has a Torah, where he talks about that he talks about about levels of amuna. It's very interesting that there's a that there's a story with the Chazanish that he said Mamish like very similar, very similar thing. The Chazanish said that there's about his about his in his generation that there's three tzaddikim, there's three tzaddikim that that um, Rav Dessler, the Mechtam so he has amuna in his mind. Rav Yalapian. From Kfar Hasidim, he has a Muna in his heart, and Chatzko Levenstein has a Muna in his hands. Okay, so he was the, the, he was the dividing these three tzaddikim in their levels of a that in three kinds of a that you have a Muna in your mind, a Muna in your heart, and a Muna in your hands. Now, so what, what does it mean? What does it mean a Muna in your hands? Right, like Muna, mind and heart, we, it's terms that we're used to. And mind and heart is like intellectual Muna and emotional Muna, right? But what does it mean to have? What, is, what does it mean to have a moon in your hands? So the truth is that this is actually a pasuk, that that there's a term that by Mechama Samalek, that when when the Jewish people were fight, fighting against the Malek, so it says that Moshe Rabbeinu went up to the mountain and he put up, picked up his hands, and and it says that when the Jewish people looked at his hands, so then they remembered Hashem, and then they were victorious in battle, and then when they when they weren't looking at his hands, so then they were they forgot about Hashem and they. And they forgot in battle. So the Torah, so the Torah says, "Vayehi yadav amuna advar hashamash." Vayehi yadav amuna. So his hands were amuna. So so Rabbi Nachman notes on this on this pasuk when it says when his hands were amuna, what it means is it's coming. The reason why it says it in such a in such a metaphorical way is to tell us that a person can reach this level that my amuna really goes into my hands. It goes into every, every limb of my body that I feel the amuna. Like, when, what do you do with your, with your hands? You feel. 
right? So amuna can be so real that it's something that with my hands, okay? So that that a person can reach this like there's a there's a cute story that that um, there's a cute story that with with Ramesha Feinstein that the ones that w when the Ramesha Feinstein was um, that after davening so so there was uh, that his his uh, secretary told him that there's uh, there's an important phone call that some big donor is on the phone and he wants to speak to him wants to speak to him about it and and he, and Ramesha and the Masha, like, m like a motion that like, I, I can't come, I'm sorry. And like, like two minutes later, so he said, come on, he's still waiting. So he said, sorry, I can't come. Like, and like, so like 10 minutes later, so he walked in and the guy already wasn't on the, wasn't, wasn't on the line. And the secretary said, like, Rabbi, what was the problem? It, it didn't seem like you're doing anything. So he said that, sorry, but like, that there was a guy behind me who was davening in the and there's a halacha, that you're, not allowed, you're not allowed to to finish, you're not allowed to take three steps back if the guy behind you is still davening. So so he so the secretary said, Rabbi, but like we're talking about thousands, thousands of dollars. Like you couldn't find some leniency. This is like it's very important. So the manager said that that what do you want from me? There there was a wall. There was a wall. You want me to walk through a wall? Meaning that the way he perceived reality, if it says in Shachanarh, that you're not allowed to walk, to walk, to take, to take three steps back. So then, as far as he was concerned, there was there was a physical wall. It was it was physically impossible for him to for him to go back. It was, and that that was like this level of perception that this level of of connecting to this truth, that there was that he has the truth, he has the truth, the truth that, that says in Shachan Arach so and such and such, and what is his connection to that truth? His connection to that truth was. That it was a physical reality, okay. So, so this is uh, this is what it means. This is what it means uh, that vayhi vayhi So, so when we're talking about, so when we're talking about about what does it mean to have a muna? So, the there's a person that there's a person that that the muna is there's a person that is in their in their mind. The person is a person who is in their in their heart. And the person that the muna is in their hands. Okay, so let's try to analyze what these three what these three levels mean. Okay, so when we're talking about having a muna in your mind. So, so it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that that just if you ask me is this true, I'll say it's true. Okay, that's because that's not that's not a, uh, that's not even a muna, right? But if the definition of a muna is to be connected to a certain truth, so the fact that I know that it's true, that doesn't mean I have any amuna to it, right? So what does it mean amuna in my mind? <clears throat> so amuna in my mind means that I'm connected to it intellectually, okay? So what does that mean? So to be connected to something intellectually means that, that there's some, and there's some people that are like this, that, that where w when, I'm, when something makes sense to me, when something resonates to me, so it means it resonates in my mind. Right? So to have a muna in my mind means that I make sure that everything in a muna resonates with my mind. Okay? And this is a very important level. Okay? It's important not to skip this level. Um, this, is the, this is why <coughs> discussing theology, discussing the, 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 the fundamentals of Judaism, by discussing it is an important thing. Because if, if everything in Judaism is just like, that's what we believe, because it's just and that's uh, and that and that's it. So then, like, our we're very shallow people, we're very shallow people. Like somebody just asked me today, um, somebody mentioned to them Murphy's Law. So she asked me, does Judaism believe in Murphy's Law? So I told her, as far as I I know, I don't think anybody believes in Murphy's Law. I think it's like a joke, like that. Like this, it is like this, like a concept of that there's some law that everything has to go the worst way possible to constantly mess everybody up. Okay, I don't think anybody believes that there's such a such a law. But like, but I, but I was I was really I was really like it bothered me, it bothered me like like that she she was like honestly asking a question like and if I would have said that yes we believe in Murphy's law then she was just okay yes Rabbi, um, um, from now on I'll. I, 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 I need mean, like I, I really believe from now on that 
everything will go in the worst possible. Like, <laughs> how, like how, how could you think? How could you think that that's a that that's really a truth? How could you? So that 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 that, that, that a very important part of emuna is to make things like to understand things in a way that they make sense. Okay, and that's why. Like the, the proper way to come to crazy things is to try to understand them. Like there's some people, um, and this is really this is really something that that Judaism differs from Christianity. That Christianity it really revels in the absurd. The the love when things don't make sense. And for like the, this is um, like the Trinity, like three is one and one is three, and like that God can impregnate a woman. Okay, the, the, these are things that don't make that don't make sense. Well, we have plenty of miraculous, weird things. I'm sorry. That. We have plenty of miraculous, weird things like like that. I would argue. What does it mean for God to have pregnant a woman? Uh, yeah, it, like, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. Does God have a, a sperm? Lot of I actually believe that anymore. Okay, maybe they're off the dark. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But maybe so. Mm -hmm. We have. Miracles is not illogical. Yeah, they are. No, there's a very big difference between between a miracle and then that saying that one is three and three is one, that is a logical impossibility. Okay, saying that God has a body, that's that's a maybe it's not a logical impossibility, but it's a philosophical impossibility. Okay, um, to the how did they say that God has a body? That Jesus was but they was God. That he's God. He does. That, that 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 that's the whole Trinity. That the son, that, yeah, the, the, that the son and the son and the father is all one. I don't. I I, don't know. That's literally what he said. That, that that is the definition of the Trinity. So we have things mm -hmm. like that, like how a soul is a piece of God. Like that doesn't make sense mm -hmm. either. In the same way, that doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. It doesn't. Or, a, a, pi um, a piece of God means that it's made of the same mass that God is made of. There's nothing irrational about that. And certainly, a miracle that isn't is a problem because because miracles. This is something we just discussed recently, that that the laws of nature were created by God. We discussed this, I think, last Tuesday, that that the laws of nature were created by God. So if the laws of nature were created by God, so of course God can put them on pause. Right, and God can make a baby inside of a virgin or whatever if He wanted to. Yeah, but it, but but it wouldn't be God's baby. Why? No, it would just be a baby. It would just be a baby. It would be like, like if you want to say that Adam was God's baby, so fine. But like, that, that's not what I'm they're not saying. Attached to this belief, obviously. That's, but that's like, not what they're saying. That's, that's not what like they're saying. Like, a, like, they just have different, you know, miracles. I feel like people use it. There's a very diff big difference between, between overriding the laws of nature and overriding the laws of logic. Okay? And that's precisely why. That's precisely why that anything that you find in Judaism, if you find something like that, that that our soul is is a chelak kalakamima, right? So if there's some logical prob problem with that, so then it's incumbent on us to try to understand it, right? And that's that's why. It that can't end there with just saying it doesn't make sense or like the the you know, laws of nature were put on hold or something. You have to like explain it more beyond that. I mean, to me, that that makes sense. If God created the laws of nature, then He can put the laws of nature on hold. That doesn't. I don't think. I don't see why it needs to go further than that. Okay. So what's the difference? Like, what's the difference between a logical impossibility yeah. and a natural impossibility? Yeah. Because logic is the rules of my brain. Okay. And so God gave me a brain. So to think that, to think that using my brain that will be the enemy, that using my brain will bring me to falsehood, that's looking at God like my enemy that He gave me a brain. To challenge oh. me, right? Okay. Meaning your logical understanding will disprove something you're supposed to believe. If if my logical thinking would disprove a certain belief, so then God was actually tricking me when He gave me my brain. That's something that a Jew would never believe. Or like. And that's why part of learning Torah is to understand everything in Judaism. Meaning to bring amuna to our brains. So that's what it means to have amuna in our brains. Like, what an example. Are here to test our amuna. That's another example. Okay, it's like not exactly what I'm what I'm what I'm driving at, but 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 for sure, like to that that to I mean that, that's the same thing I was saying that along the same lines as that Hashem wouldn't give us logic to trick us, Hashem wouldn't give us fossils to trick us. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, um, 
and to and these people that say, yeah, science, science, I don't believe in that. Like, like that's like that's a very, uh, it's 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 a very non seichel approach to Judaism. It, that, that's that's a person that doesn't have a moon in their brain. They've basically decided that my brain is the enemy, and I'll stop using my brain. Okay, um, and and that's like when when the the with so many sources that say the opposite. That when we're, when we're talking about having a muna in our brains, this is precisely what it means, that it's not enough to just say, I believe and I don't care if it doesn't make sense. That a person that says, I believe but it doesn't make sense, there's something lacking in their muna. Okay? So the, a part of part of muna is to try to understand that when things, that, and like, I'm not saying that we're going to understand everything, but to try to understand them. To try to, when things seem, seem not to make sense, if why would God want me to do this? So then like, a person could say, okay, I'm going to turn my brain off. I'm just going to accept, yes, God. Like, that's, that's a person that doesn't have a muna in their brains. Okay? That's a person that, that is turning off their brains. Okay? So the first, the, first step, the first step of the muna is having a muna in our brains. Okay? So then the next step, the next step is that to have a muna in our hearts. And so, and so, so by the way, it's just like when it comes to emunah in our brains. So emunah b'moach. So this is when the, the the this is according to many opinions. This is the mitzvah, the mitzvah of emunah. We're fulfilling the mitzvah of emunah when we're talking about it, when we're trying to understand it, when when things are trying to to take form, like right? to understand what does it mean that there's a God, what does it mean that there's like, what does it mean that we daven? What does it mean that God listens to our davening? What is it? Like, uh, anything. Anything that has to do with our relationship with Judaism. That what, is, what does it mean that God cares? Like, uh, any, basically, anything that has to do with God. So there are a lot of questions that need to be addressed. And a person, that, a person has two options. Either they can just choose not to address them and remain with a very, with a very immature take on Judaism and God. Or they can... Try to figure it out, and that's that's what it means to have a muna with your brain. Okay, so now we'll have to speak about this more. We'll have to speak about this more because because the not to be confused with the with with what what Rav Nachman talks about a muna pshuta a muna pshuta a muna We're going to have a whole class about this bezat Hashem. That there's there's a whole debate that. What should be the foundation of our emunah? Okay, option number one is that blind faith. Blind faith. Option number two is that logical proofs. Okay, what should be the foundation? The the, the foundation of my belief? Should I say, so I yes, Rabbi, whatever you say, Rabbi, or should I say, prove it? In nicer terms. Okay, um, maybe like, could you expound that on that, on that maybe, or could you maybe explain that a little bit better? Like, oh, you're uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know because not you per se, but like, in like I, I've had in the way experiences of people oh, that, like that, that that yeah, there, there have been rude people that uh, yeah. that, um, that yeah, and like so it. it it's like it, it's, it's this fine line that like you, I I don't want people to just trust me, but I do want people to trust me, like. I want, like, I don't want people to, to I, I don't want people to think that I'm trying to brainwash them, but, but, but I want them to, like, to, to have a basic trust that, like, I'm, I'm only going to say something if I really, really believe it myself, and I'm only believe it myself if I have real, a real good reason why I believe it myself. So, like, so it's like, mm -hmm. so, like, it, it, it depends how they're, like, depends how they're, how they ask it. And so, like sometimes it comes from a, like it sounds like it's coming from a place of like, like you're full of it. Every mm. blood sugar has had that <laughs> challenge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, so now, so there's a whole debate that we're, that we're going to we're gonna get to that what should be the motivation of my, of my Amuna? Should it be yes, sir? Or should it be prove it? Should it be, so, so on that, so on that, so, so Rabbi Nachman is very fiery. He's very adamant not to be from the prove it school okay he was he said you should never open these books books that if you if the book says how to prove that there's a god never open that book he says 
okay? <laughs> that, that he says that, that's, that a person, that their, that, their pr- that their motivation of belief is by proofs, so there's something very, that, that very dangerous and very lacking in their emuna. Okay? Um, now, why? Why is that? Why is that? So, like, again, just as, like, just as a preview, but, uh, but that, that, that his approach was that, that if the reason why I believe something is because of a certain proof, so then if I go to somebody smarter than me that can disprove it, so then I'm going to lose my faith. Yeah. Right? That, meaning that, that I, intellectual conversations have a value that if I'm adamantly atheist and you can question my, I can question my stance, so then the, the logical question will have value in helping me to question my stance. But if I go through life saying, okay, fine, so I'm becoming religious because you proved me wrong. But then when I go home and then just to speak to my teacher and he'll be smarter than me, so then he'll answer my question and then I can go back to being atheist. And, I, that the, and the truth is, and the truth is that I, I actually, I truly believe that, that God is so great that he doesn't want to be able to be scientifically proved. And, the, and I truly believe that he created a world, created a reality in which the, it's, it's actually, it's, 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 it's impossible. It's impossible to, to, to prove that whether or not he's there. That it certainly, it certainly it makes more sense to say that he's there. But to prove scientifically that he's there to the point that, that, like, that it's like impossible to deny. So I don't think Hashem wants like to be, to be so minimized to like a mathematical equation. Do you think when people teach like Torah proofs, they shouldn't be doing that? Um, I thought they shouldn't be doing it because I think for a lot of people, like I said, it's really, it's really that they're, they're very firmly atheist and they need something to shake them. Mm-hmm. They need something to, to, to really to wake them up from their from their like emuna slumber. Like uh, years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like just like the, the first like the way I was saying like for, like for some people like for some like for some people they need like some psychedelic trip to like to get them out of out of their firm atheism. So like for some people it's enough to have a good logical question. Mm-hmm. Like um, and so if that's if that works so then that's that's an important that's an important stepping stone. That's an important way to get to Amuna. But if a person is going to say that, yeah, um, I decided that I'm going to start keeping Shabbos because um, it seems too, too illogical. It's too illogical that the Torah was made up. So I want to play my cards right, and I'm smarter. It's, I'm smarter keeping Shabbos. Like if that's if that's if that's the if if that's what your belief is, so then there's something very lacking in your. In your, in, your, in your faith. And that's what Rabbi Nachman said, that Amuna cannot just be because of proofs. Okay? Amuna has to be, has to be that, that I believe just because I believe. Meaning that, that once again, if we define Amuna is as what is my connection to a truth, so if my connection to the truth is the fact that it's, the fact that it's, 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 it was proven to me, so then that's a very, it's a very weak connection. Okay, so like meaning, there, there's there's things that there's, there's there's things that that there's a truth. Anybody here been to China? Mm-hmm. China? No. Okay. Who knows China. what what's the capital of China? Shanghai. Beijing. No, Beijing. Oh, okay. Beijing. Okay. Yeah. I think that. Yeah. So <laughs> okay, so Beijing is the is the capital of China. Of China. Okay. So now, if if I would. If I would tell you that that you know the, that it's actually a, a, a common misconception that like the, in, the, the truth is that the real Chinese people know that really Beijing is not the capital of China. Okay, um, they have the best Chinese food, so that's why they thought that it was the capital. That, that so would that would, would that would that change anything, anything in your life? That you, you have a certain connection. You have a certain connection to this truth that Beijing is the capital of China. And, but your whole connection is the fact that, that, that's, that that's what you read somewhere, okay? And that, that, that then you have truths that it's not just, it's not that it's, 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 it's somebody, somebody proved it to you, okay? I made a, 
like I explained to you logically how photosynthesis works, and I explained to you logically, and I said, okay, so that, that that's a logical proof, okay, and but if somebody would say, you know, it's actually this photosynthesis thinks it's really all it's a big hoax, hoax, and like it really works something else, it's really the, and like to say, okay, but what well, anyway, it's okay, but he proved it to you, I said, okay, but. So he proved it to me. Like, that doesn't really make a difference to my life. And then you have different truths that you can actually, it's not just, you read it somewhere, it's not just that somebody proved it to you. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a proof that, it's a, it's a truth that you experienced. It's a truth that you experienced. It's a truth that's, that's part of your reality. Okay? So then when you experience something, so then your connection to that truth is much greater. Okay? So somebody would tell you that that like that the that the, the place that Alal that that uh, that Alal takes you, it's really not Israel. It's really Holland. And uh, like, you know, the Kotel is in is really in Holland. And like like Neve is really in Holland. It's, it's, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like it's like it's like No, no, it, 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 it just I that, that that's that's a truth that I experienced. So it's it's just it it's it's you can't Talk me out of it. You can't, you can't uh, confuse me about this because this is the truth that I actually experienced. Okay. So when Rabbi Nachman says that amuna pshuta, to have amuna, that amuna which is not, it's not. Bec- if I ask you, but who said? Who said? Who said this? Maybe yours in Holland. Like, does it, did it said some sign that Israel? Uh, like it, it can't just write a sign. That 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 if if, if my if my amuna is simply because of some proof, then there's something very lacking. That my amuna. That my the way the way Rav Cook said it is that that my muna is that that I know that God is God the same way that I know that I am me. Okay, that's the way that I know that you know. How do you know that you're really you? <coughs> you never know. <laughs> There's this joke about this guy that that he was. Um, I don't know what kind of mental illness he had, but he was like he was always concerned that he's gonna that he's gonna forget who he is. He's gonna forget who he is. So so he so so he so he said that so his problem was that that as long as he gets dressed in the morning, so he'll look in the mirror and he'll remember how he looks, because remember what he what he put on in the morning. But the problem was that when he goes to the mikvah, so he's not wearing clothes. So how's he gonna remember who he is? So he had this trick. So he had he he put a he put a uh, like a red like a, a red, a red string, like to give it the cartel, and he put it around his wrist. And that way, even though he doesn't have his clothes on, but he'll always look at the red string and remember who he is. Okay. So lo and behold, one day in the mikvah, so his bed bracelet fell off, and and it went on somebody else. <laughs> so, no, no, it's just like he, 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 he didn't do it tight enough. So it fell off his wrist and it kind of went to somebody else's wrist. So he's going, <laughs> he's going crazy. And finally he goes, goes to the whole mikvah and he finds, and he finds the guy and says, Oh, good. I'm so happy I found you. I know who you are, but tell me, who am I? <laughs> okay. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> yeah. okay. so, so this is like, so it was a funny joke, right? Oh, yeah. Hilarious, okay? So, good. Okay, so, so wh- why, why is this so funny? Because, because it's, a, it's absurd to think of that the reason why I know I'm me is because I proved it. Because I looked at, the, I looked at my bracelet and that's how I know that I'm me. That's, that, that the reason why I know I'm me is because I know I'm me. Right? So that, that, that's how ridiculous it is to say that I know that God is God because I, 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 I heard some class about how to prove that God is God. Okay, that 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 amuna is that my connection to the fact that God is God is the same connection to the fact that I am me. So it's it's simply a knowledge. It's simply a reality. It's a, it's simply the way I experience life. Okay, so so this is the so, so this is the the first the so, so this is so that's what I'm saying that we're talking about amuna in my brains. Amuna in my brains does not mean that. That I that like, amuna in brains means that I need to connect logically to all of my amunas, <coughs> not to be like the Christian belief that I believe because it's absurd, or that the more absurd it is, the more beautiful it is, the more it shows my loyalty. That in Judaism, the, there is no such thing. 
there's a mitzvah to understand everything. There's a mitzvah everything should make some kind of sense. And that is, uh, and, and that is why Amunah in our brains is so good. However, that can't be the end goal. That can't be that my relationship with the truth can't just be that it's that it, I believe because my motivation is because I proved it, but rather that's it's only a first stepping stone and it needs to get to something deeper. Okay? So what's what's it supposed to get to? So what's a, what what's the next step? Okay, the next step is next step is Amuna, Amuna in my heart. Okay, Amuna in my emotions. Okay. Meaning that that you can have a person that they know but they don't care. Okay? They know but they don't care. Okay? Feeling is caring. Okay? That if I that if I if I have a muna in my brains but I don't have a muna in my heart, that means that 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 yeah, I like if a person says if, if a person if a person like say, like is doing some some avera and they say, Yeah, I'm gonna go to hell. That's like I've seen people say this, you know. And so what what, what does that mean? Like what, what what are they really saying? What are they like they don't care. That, that it means they don't care, right? It means that, that they have a muna in their brains. Like they're not gonna, like at least they're they're wise enough not to become atheist. Like they're they're not they haven't gone that far that they need to reprogram their brains, but but they don't care. But they like they, they it doesn't like when they're when they're saying when they're saying that I'm gonna go to hell. What do they really mean? They don't really mean that they think they're gonna that that they think they're gonna go to hell, right? With, Exactly. So enough to change what they do now. Exactly. Okay. That what they're saying is that like I don't believe in my heart. I don't believe in my heart. Like I, a part of me believes, but the more important part in my decision-making process, which is my heart, doesn't believe. What about like anxiety? Um, that like of things you should have a moon about, but you can't clearly like like how someone with a moon should be calm and like uh, trusting like and not have anxiety all the time right, right yeah, that, that's the same same question as before oh, right okay, that, that, yeah. that, 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 that's like have, trusting it's Hashem like, trusting Hashem is one of the things is one of the um, facts that we're supposed to be connected to yeah right but we're still defining Amuna I'm just saying the Amuna in the heart sounds like I could the first thing I thought of was not that someone doesn't care, but that someone can't feel the right things. Like what? Yeah, what do you mean? Not, not to feel like the right things. They're supposed to feel assured, and they're feeling like fearful or whatever. Like even though they have a moon on, and they know they shouldn't feel anxiety, they're like <laughs> nervous about something. <laughs> um, they still do it. I see. Um, would you so you're asking you're asking you're saying that that, that would be yeah, that, I, that, that, that would be an example of a person that doesn't have a muna in their heart. Their heart yeah, I think. Uh, not, not that they don't care, but they don't feel the right way about the thing they're supposed to. Sure. Connected. Also, also, I don't think it's a kind of, I don't think it's a contradiction. I think it's two examples. Okay. I think it's two different ways of of having a muna or not having a muna in, in one's heart. Wouldn't that be more like not having it in your head? But but if you ask him, like if you if you ask them, do you believe that? That Hashem cares about you, they'll say yes. Do you, do you believe that Hashem has your back? They'll say yes. So why are you so worried? I don't know. I'm sorry. Like, um, right. okay. So they, they they know it in their head. They, like, they know the right answers. They know the, they know the right answers. It's just and yeah. This is like, and th- th- this is really why this is like like sometimes like you, you can have you can have people that they like they they give up on Judaism. Because they know so much, because they know so much, and this is this is why, um, to many people, Hasidus is so critical. Because like I, I met a person a couple of months ago, that that he, he that he um, became a rabbi. He went he went to he did a smicha program in Wayo, and he became a rabbi, and and he was he was very learned and he knew he knew everything. That there was, like, not everything, but he, he knew quite quite a bit, and and at some point um, he got frustrated slash bored, and he stopped became he stopped being religious. He was he was not doing anything, he was not doing he was not keeping anything at all, and like, as he was 
and and as he was like doing averos, he was like like thinking about how many averos he's doing, and like it was like, mm -hmm. and and um, and and, it, it, and, he was, and he told me he told me like, like he, he told me like after he came back already that I, I only met him after after he came back, and he was telling me how like it was so frustrating because he knew that there was like quote unquote he knew that that there was no one to talk to because I know all the answers, I know uh, like any question in the book I was a rabbi, I. I Whatever question you have, I'll tell you what the answer is. And but the problem was that his connection to all these truths was only in his mind; it wasn't in his heart. Okay, so and that's why that's why Hasidus is so critical because Hasidus is this focus on that if you're not passionate about it, if you're not if there's not part of your heart, then it's not real. Okay, it's like it's not it's very superficial. It's only it's a good first step, but it's it's not enough. There was a there's a story there's a story with that with um, I believe it was with was was with Rebbe Leiber Eger so so he was the son of Rosh Eger who was the grandson of Rebbe Kiva Eger Rebbe Kiva Eger was the God he was the biggest it was the biggest anti Hasidic person you could imagine and he was the greatest Torah giant in the entire world okay. And so he had a son who was also a huge, huge rabbi, but not the same level as he is, but, but a huge rabbi. His name is Shlomeger. And his son was a Bleibleger. So Bleibleger, so Nebuch, he became Hasidish. And like, there's a legend that when he became Hasidish, that his father like, sat Shiva on him. That was Mamish, uh, like horrible. Um, I don't think that's verified, though. Um, but, but there's a story that the first time that he went to, to, his, um, to, to his rabbi, his rabbi was, his rabbi was, was his rabbi the like maybe the chazim I think I think it was him. That so when he went so when he went to the chazim for for two, for two weeks, so so he came so he came back so he came back after two, after two weeks maybe maybe it was longer it was for two or three months. So his father asked him, "No, what you were label? What what you learn? What did you learn by this?" By this Hasidic rabbi, so 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 Leibel looked at him like with like a, a fire in his eyes, and he said, he "said Abba, I learned that I learned I learned that there's a God in heaven." And and so the and so I happened to be there at the like as they were talking. So the the maid was was in the room, and so and so he said so he, so Shlomo said Spencer, tell me something. Who's in heaven? So he says, God. So he says, Leibola, you just wasted three months of your life. Our maid knows more than you. <laughs> and so, so he said, so he said the following. He said, she says it. I know it. Okay. And and this is and then, this is what we're talking about. There's, there's, but there's knowing and there's knowing, and that there's knowing that a person can that it, it, a lot of people like if you ask them, is there a God in heaven? So then, yeah, for sure. Like in my mind, that's for sure what I believe. And but there's a knowledge that this is my reality, okay? That this is this is my reality. So, so the definition of amuna is my connection, my connection to, my connection to my truths. And so there's a connection in my mind. There's a connection in my emotions. This is my my caring, being like being passionate. And and then there's an even Greater level that it's in my it's my hands, okay. And that's that's when when my moon is something that it's like tangible, something that it's that it's like that that that's a very high level. I don't think like it's it's nice to talk about such a level, but I don't think it's really possible for us that that that, that this should be that that it's a it's a physical reality, that that not to that to like like for me to 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 eat without a bracha is just physically impossible. It's like physically impossible. It's like, like if, like, I don't know, uh, like, like, like the story about that, the, the, like the Ramesh Feinstein said, I can't walk because there's a wall. Like if it says in Shachan Aruch that there's, I can't walk, so then it's physically impossible for me to walk. Okay, that's. Isn't mm. that like a brain thing, not a, not a physical thing? He said that he could walk. Right, of course, of course, of course, of course. But but I, but I'm, what I mean is that his his connection to this truth was so strong. It manifested in him not. I'll, I'll tell you like this. Um, we have a truth that we want to live, right? And our connection to that truth is so strong that 
we're not physically capable of killing ourselves. Okay? And if somebody, if somebody is going to convince you that logically it's, uh, it's worth it for you, is going to give billions of dollars to people that you need, that you love, and like, I, I don't know, and like, say, just jump, just jump off the roof. Come on, go for it. It's a, it's a smart thing to do. So we're, we're, if we're healthy, we're, we're not physically possible to jump. We're not, it's, not, it's a physical impossibility. Why? Because we're so connected to that truth that we want to live. So it, it's a physical impossibility. So physical emuna in our hands is that anything that in the spiritual realm, we're so connected to that truth that it's physically impossible. But it's not. It's a choice. It's not physically impossible. It's a choice. So maybe you're using the wrong word. Like, what, 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 what do you call that connection of not being able to jump off a roof? <laughs> um, sorry, I said not. Um, can you repeat the question? The, uh, a person defines it impossible. His brain is telling his legs to jump, and he can't jump. Even if it's not suicide, even like you can, even if it's like some like some like you know, some hikes to some like high dive that you're you just that, want to jump. that 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 you, it's because you're scared. It's because you're you're scared of something. So this fear is over. It's making it physically impossible. Even though my brain is telling my legs to jump, they won't listen. Why? Because this reality of fear is something which is which is make a physical reality to me. It's it doesn't. Even though my brain is telling my legs jump, my legs don't listen. Because the fear is connected to the emuna? No, it's, a, it's an example. I'm saying just like that, um, that fear oh. controls my... Fi I f it's a physical reality. Okay. Even though it's not physical, it's a choice. But I'm saying that that's my, uh, that's why that's my example. Okay. Right? So a person can reach a, a level of emuna that anything in the physical world, that if, you, if there's something like non-kosher meat, like I'm not physically possible to eat it. Even though like, I, I wish I could. I'm telling myself to, to eat it. I just... I just can't. I just can't. It's just physically that that's a level that that the the fact that the fact that Hashem says that it's not good for me, so it's it's poison. It's poison to me. That this that, that just like if you tell me drink a cup of acid, so like I just can't. I just can't drink a cup of acid. So for me, a a a, a piece of a piece of pork is the same thing. So you wouldn't say it's a choice. Not at this point. A person that has such an amuna that their amuna is in their hands, mm -hmm. in this terminology, so then it, there's no choice. It's mm -hmm. right, exactly, exactly. It's, 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 there is no choice. It's, it's, I'm, it's completely beyond my cap capability to eat it. Okay. Does amuna in your hands have anything to do with like actions? Like how, what you do in the world? Because you're defining it as like uh, an experience, but is there anything like, do the hands have anything to do with like in this analogy, or um, you want to say that that if, if I have money in my hands, then I do stuff with my money. Yeah, maybe I think everyone does stuff with their money. I think everyone does whatever their money are. They do stuff. Um, I think it goes. For, I think it, 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 it goes without saying. It goes without saying. I think that in every level of money, I'm doing stuff with my money. Okay. But I don't think it's necessarily. Uh, it's it's not necessarily related to emuna in my hands. Got it. Yeah. Um, I just want to end off with with a story that that I was I was told the story as as an, as a metaphor for what what emuna means, <laughs> and that going back to what we were talking about before that emuna is the fundamental things. It's the thing that everything else depends on. So, so somebody once gave the following the following metaphor that there was a guy. That, that he was like a very, very successful man and everyone loved him. And he was on like every board of, of like the, the board of the city council and the parents board of the school and, the, and everyone just was always asking him for help, asking for advice. And, and it was just, he was a great father, he was a great friend, he was a great neighbor, everything, everything good. And, and the and a great husband, the other, and, and, and then one day, one day, so he took his life. One day, he, he just, he woke up, they, 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 they found him, and he had shot himself in the head, and 
but everyone was just so aghast. Like how, how, how could this be? If he had everything, everything going for him. So they looked into his in, into the story, and it turned out that this guy. So he he was he he was brought up in a very very poor family, and he worked very hard to um, to build himself up the economic ladder, and. And as he grew in the economic ladder, that is what allowed him to believe in himself. That because he was able to be successful financially, that is why he respected himself. And it's because he looked at himself as somebody that is worth something. It's from that stance that he was able to, to be a good person father to be a good husband to be a good uh, to be to be a person that people looked up to but really that he was a very fragile man and every day he was really his he was living with this reality that that wow I'm absolutely nobody an absolute failure and but he said oh no but that's not true because I have five million dollars in the bank look at what I did so I'm a somebody so if I'm a somebody so then I can live my life. So lo and behold, the night before he had realized that he had made some kind of financial blooper and he was going to go bankrupt. So at the moment that he didn't have financial security, so nothing else mattered because everything in his entire life was built upon this premise that I'm worth something, I deserve I justify my existence because I'm a financial success. So at the moment that that wasn't there anymore, then nothing else existed. And he just he couldn't he couldn't exist. He couldn't he couldn't be in the world because because his his whole justification of existence no longer existed. Okay, so so that's a true story. That's a true story. That that somebody was bringing this as an analogy of this is what this is what emuna is. Like I'm not saying anybody should commit suicide, but but that Amuna is that that I mean, God is God exists, so it's okay. So that Amuna is that that the basic tenant on which everything else makes sense. Meaning that that the reason why it makes sense for me to get a job, the reason why it makes sense for me to talk to people, the reason why it makes sense to build a family, the, that everything, my entire perception of reality. Is dependent on one basic thing, and that is, and that is God. Meaning that, that if that when we're talking about God as Emuna as being as being something which is dependent, something dependent. So that that my connection to this truth, in being the most fundamental thing in my life, is should it should be that without these truths, so nothing else makes sense. Okay, so. If my emunas are just truths or just belief systems, so then it, like, it, it could be I could have my life and have my belief systems. So that's why when the Rambam is saying that emuna is an ikar, it's something which is a fundamental, it's a foundation, so then what he's really saying is that it's not enough that it's something I believe in. That it's, I didn't really reach emuna until nothing else makes sense. This is the prism through which I perceive reality. That nothing else, that like, I, would have to, I would have to literally just, that, that, that's why, that's, that's why um, I've heard from people, uh, from themselves, that, that, that told me that, that, when they, that when they stopped believing in God, they, like, first of all, first of all, actu like, actually, like, there's a huge the, a suicide rate in people that go off the dach. In like and like, like people, people like people that they were grow, like grew up with with like real amuna and then they stopped believing for whatever reason. So then there's a hu there's a very high suicide rate, and and people that Baruch Hashem are still alive. They told me that the the nothing was the same. They looked they, they looked out in the world and just it was just such an empty life. Like they ev like they really they, they really experienced how when they had amuna, so everything was was nicer. Everything was meaningful. Everything had, had a place. And now that there's no God, so now nothing, nothing makes a difference anymore. So, so that's like, 
it's a shame that they lost their emunah, but, 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 but when they had it, that, that is exactly what emunah is supposed to be. That it's the thing that really gives shape to everything else. So, so this is, this is uh, I would say that this is true on all three levels. That this is that, that, that this true, that, that this level of emunah, that emunah is something that, that is the fundamental thing in my existence, this, this is even true on the level of intellectual. That's, but certainly, it's also true in the emotional and in the, and the physical. So, so I hope this was helpful. This is, uh, I think this is like, this, uh, just the, to define what is a muna. And for next class, so we'll start going into the things that, what are these truths that we're trying to connect to? Bezat Hashem. L'chaim, Chodesh Tav.